get this. There are actually six hormones that your body doesn't produce properly as a person with type 1 diabetes or type 1.5 diabetes like Lance Bass. Six hormones, but your doctor only gave you a prescription to replace one of those hormones. Insulin is obviously the first one, but it gets so much more complicated than that. Before we even get to the hormones, we have to first talk about the cells, the cells that produce those hormones. Because your pancreas does more than just produce insulin. It's responsible for a whole bunch of things. Okay, so we've got these two things the pancreas does. It produces a whole bunch of hormones and it produces a bunch of enzymes. Those enzymes go into your digestive tract and they help with digestion. Those are working pretty okay. But all these hormones start with the islets, the islets of Langerhans. Langerhans is the guy who identified this whole part of the pancreas. Inside the pancreatic islets of Langerhans are five types of cells. Beta cells, alpha cells, delta cells, gamma cells, and epsilon cells. Yes, alpha, beta, gamma, bleh. Okay, so your immune system in type 1 diabetes is directly attacking and destroying the beta cells. The beta cells produce insulin. But the problem is that when you attack the beta cells, you destroy the whole communication process that beta cells have with the alpha and the gamma and the delta and the epsilon cells. So the hormones that those cells produce also get completely disrupted. Like here's a quick little example. When your blood sugar is dropping because you have too much insulin present, in a non-diabetic, the beta cells are going to turn off because, okay, your blood sugar is dropping, you don't need more insulin. But the beta cells are supposed to talk to some of the other cells and say, hey, produce some sugar release some sugar to bring our blood sugar up and keep us steady. That whole conversation is off. Another thing, your beta cells are supposed to tell other cells, hey, send out the cues that you're eating and you're full and you don't need more food. And that's why a lot of type ones are hungry all the time. So let's take a look at what those other hormones are. They get all screwed up because those other cells aren't getting clear messages from the beta cells. Okay, let's start with amylin. Amylin is a hormone that's also produced by your beta cells, which means you aren't producing any amylin because your beta cells have been attacked and destroyed. Amylin is really important. The hormone amylin actually slows down how quickly you digest a meal and it helps you feel full sooner. This explains why type ones don't feel full very easily when eating. Amylin is also supposed to tell your liver to release less sugar because you don't need a whole bunch of extra sugar from your liver if you just ate a meal. In type one, this means we are overproducing sugar. Our liver is making more sugar than we need, which means we need more insulin than we would normally need. That lack of amylin is actually so significant, but we're not given any. Yes, there are drugs that are supposed to mimic amylin and they are FDA approved for type one diabetes, but nobody talks about them. And the old ones actually aren't designed very well. It's called Simlin and it just is like a very messy medication to take. You have to take it multiple times a day because it doesn't last long in your system. So it can create this like funky effect on your blood sugars and it also can make people feel really nauseous. Nauseous. Way more nauseous than a lot of the GLP-1 medications today, like Ozempic or Manjaro. This is why type 1s benefit from medications like Ozempic and Manjaro. All right, amylin, that was the second hormone. Insulin was number one. Number three, glucagon. Glucagon is a hormone that tells your liver to release stored sugar when your blood sugar is dropping, and that prevents low blood sugars. That's why people without diabetes just kind of hang steady. You know, they might dip into the 60s, but it's pretty rare. And glucagon is also supposed to shut off when your blood sugar rises to 90. So it's supposed to just do its job to keep you in that safety zone. Glucagon is produced by the alpha cells. So your body is capable of producing glucagon, but you don't have the beta cells to communicate to the alpha cells that it should even do that. Another one comes from the gamma cells, pancreatic polypeptide. They actually aren't really sure what the heck this hormone does, but they know it helps promote satiety and fullness when eating, and it helps communicate and manage your liver's production of sugar. There's a lot of research looking at pancreatic polypeptides impact on a person's insulin needs. So they think that pancreatic polypeptides could help people with type one diabetes need less insulin. Somatostatin. 
That one's produced by the Delta cells and it has a huge impact on your body's ability to use and produce and manage glucagon. Without somatostatin, you can't manage low blood sugars, you can't prevent low blood sugars. Somatostatin works in tandem with glucagon to manage your blood sugar and prevent lows and then treat the low but not go too high. Somatostatin tells your body like, hey, don't produce so much insulin, chill out. And then yeah, bring some sugar from the liver. We need that. It just, it's like telling everybody when to press the gas and when to back off. The last hormone comes from your epsilon cells, ghrelin. Ghrelin plays a big role in managing your appetite, but they think that it's actually not as affected by type one diabetes because your digestive system actually produces more ghrelin than your pancreas. What does all this mean? It means that it makes sense that people with type one need support from other medications to decrease how much sugar your liver is producing, decrease your appetite, help you feel more full after eating a meal. It makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people with diabetes struggle to manage binge eating. And there's a good reason why. Your brain is not getting the cues from the hormones that your pancreas is supposed to be producing to tell you that you're full. This is where GLP-1 medications have been really helpful for people with type 1 diabetes. And yet, they're not FDA approved. They're not even really seeking FDA approval because there's not enough money in getting these meds for people with type 1. There are clinical trials out there from smaller companies working on getting FDA approval for GLP-1s. I'm hopeful it will happen. But shame on those big pharma companies for not pursuing this themselves because people with type 1 diabetes would absolutely benefit from this. They haven't spent money on doing tests to prove that these drugs are safe in type 1s and the risk of hypoglycemia has everybody so nervous. But the funny thing about taking a GLP-1 is once you start taking it, you adjust your insulin doses. You might adjust them again a few weeks later. If you stay on that dose, your insulin doses are now pretty consistent. It's like before, except now you need less. So it's easier to manage. If you increase your GLP-1 dose, then you're gonna see that you need to decrease your insulin doses again. If you wanna learn more about taking Ozempic with type one diabetes, check out my other videos.